Hey everybody, it's Jeremy again with Flies and Guides here to teach you how to tie the hybrid crayfish. This is a video I've had up before, but um, I'm revising them all because I feel like I need to. Better cameras, better everything, you know, as far as all that's concerned. And those look really bad. So these are the crawdads that I tie. I invented a fly kind of like this for Bob up there at Bob and Ed up at Feathercraft a long time ago. I think in 2003 I was tying commercially for their catalog. So um, there was a crawdad in there. They wanted me to kind of revise it, revamp it. And so I did, and I've been a fan of it ever since. So, and a lot of other people have too. So we're going to tie this little crawdad right here, which is uh, comes in three colors. You can get them on the site too for sale. They uh, come in orange, natural, which is a brown, and olive. So let's get started. Tie, uh, show you how to tie one of these things. I've already got the hook and the vise, and uh, this is a Dairiki 700B. Um, and then this is an MFC 7073, same deal. This is a size four hook. It's got a bend in the hook, you can tell. And the back of this, I usually use 30.30, but you know, this hook was just laying around, so I, I grabbed it. I think this is 0.20. I like the 30 because it's a little heavier and you definitely get down faster. So I would tell you to put the 0.30 on about 12 wraps. And that little bend in the hook point is definitely a reference for you. So make sure you pay attention to that. Don't build and crowd that up. So we're gonna get started. I'm using some uni thread in a six aught, which uh, I just grabbed it and it came out. I'm sure that happens to everybody. So we'll just stick that in there. That's it. Um, what I like to do is start back here, Kind of trap this and thread dam it so it doesn't really shift on you if it does look it is right there just push it back down we're gonna go back up here you cut your tag whenever you want i'll do it now we're gonna stop a little bit before the bend because we're gonna put in some flash okay just some some flash of okay one strand Just fold it over the thread. You don't have to be fancy with this either as far as like, oh, the antenna's got to, they got to be fanned out great and blah, blah, blah. They don't. It's whatever. Those fish don't care. This is some SX4, I believe, Spanflex from uh, Wopsy. But, you know, that's sexy floss from MFC. It's pretty good stuff too. I mean, they've got all kinds of good stuff now. So now, this is where I'm going to work it to the back where I want it to stop at the stopping position. These are going to be shorter than your flash. You want your flash a little longer than those. Or you can just do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. But that's kind of what I do right there. And uh, we're going to get this Swiss draw and we're going to cut it right on the folds. So right where it folds is a great reference for you. So uh, this is where it gets tricky right here at the hook point. When you get, you make sure you're at the bend back here where you want to be stopped. And don't put too much, don't be short on this because what will happen is um, you won't be able to grab it as good. And once you poke that through, you kind of want that to stop right where, as close as you can back there. Because if you get, if you stop way up here, and you start winding back, this point is going to just start slicing right through that material. So you're going to have a big hole in it when you go to fold it. So that's about it. And you don't have to worry about tying that stuff down. You can tie it down in a minute. So now we're going to create a little hump. And this is for the pinchers so they flare. I'm just going to create a little ball right there. And then I'm going to stick the pinchers on. <clears throat> just get some pine squirrel here. I think this is a regular cut, like a not a micro cut. I think they all just come like this, though. And if you notice, I get up in the hide there. I don't want to just cut openly. I want to stick my finger and wedge it in there. I mean the scissor and wedge it in there. And then measure the next one. 
make your cut. And then I peel a little of this off and you can make these, you can cut these pinchers to your length after you tie them down if you want, or you can do it now. We're just gonna tie that in. Do the same thing over here. And there's your pinchers. Now you gotta get some of this hen saddle. You gotta get way back up in here so you get the longer stuff, okay? And some of this is really bad and some of it's really good, so fly shops don't like when I come in because I'll uh, open their stuff up, look and make sure I get the right stuff. If you just buy stuff to buy stuff, you're going to get a lot of garbage. There's a lot of garbage out there. I'm just going to split that. Tie that back to the stopping point, and then you're going to make a dubbing loop right here. I don't wind all the way back. I stop a little bit because I don't want to grab those pinchers. When you start spinning it, you can grab that stuff. So this is SLF dubbing right here, Whitlock. So you just want to put the dubbing in there and uh, make sure you don't have knots in this dubbing. Just kind of play with it, you know, fan it out with your fingers here. Because if you don't, when you go to do the, the twisty, you're going to have a lot of Nazis, little clumpies. So I'm just going to throw that in there like so. And then uh, take this little, uh, I like this one because it's heavy down there. So as soon as you let go of that, you can just spin it. I don't want it too ropey. So if you, if you go too much, too tight, you'll get more of a rope. So you kind of have to just gauge that. So I'm going to go up front first. But I like to stop in the middle there because most of your bulk's going to be in the middle of that. So now I'm going to wind almost all the way back to that bend. Then I'm going to go right back up and concentrate on the middle here to create that nice hump. And then you just tie it down at that little point, the bend in the hook. Okay. A rabbit's up in my nose. So here we're going to do a uh, about four turns of this. About what I do. And then I like that little fluff, that marabou kind of slapping look back here at the back. Cut that excess off and kind of just push all that up there and clean that up a little bit. And this is where you get your wire, which is BR in size. This is where you get your wire. I only use BR. I use it for my midges and everything. I don't use small, medium, large, any of that really. I use that BR. Maybe it'll focus. Okay, so now you tie your, your wire down. And uh, then you're ready to fold your Swiss straw. Okay? So get your scissors. Just come in here in the middle and just kind of split that just so you have a reference on where you want to split it. And then I just kind of move it to each side. Make sure you're right at your stop right here. So when you go to fold, you're ready to, to grab it. I kind of like to make sure that that Swiss draw is kind of fanned out evenly too. You only need two turns. Then you're going to start dubbing the body here in the back. And you can wet your fingers too and you kind of get that material back out of the way. And kind of go a little bit more right there on that notch. And then you can just start going up with it. And like I say in all my videos, don't get dubbing happy. Just put a little bit out of time so that it really adheres to that thread. If the ball's too clumpy, it's not gonna grab going to be loose so when you go to tie it in it's going to want to come off the thread there a little bit
Okay. Now we're just going to fold that over. We're going to do five wraps for the segmentation for the body. Okay. So we've got one right there, two, three, four, five, and then six is your last one. Now just move your wire back and forth. I don't like to cut it unless you have some bad scissors, but you always leave a tag. If you shake it back and forth, move it back and forth, it'll cleanly break where you want it. And that's it. Whip it, and then get you a popsicle stick um, with some Velcro. It's the best dubbing brush in the world. We're just going to taper this down a little bit so it kind of tapers into the body. And then the uh, last thing is you can uh, cut these. These are a little long. So I'll go in here and measure them. If they're too long, they get a little lazy and they don't want to do the little bend flare look. Also what you can do here, and I, just, I do this a lot, is you can take some of this red, okay? And you can use a, you can do it as a pincher. Just take a section of this, little baby cuts. About that much. And that got cut wrong. Let's do that again. Come here on the back of the scissor here. Get inside the hide. You don't want to cut that hair. And that's about all I use. See that right there? What you can do is you can come in here with some glue and you can glue that little pincher on there. I'll go ahead and show you how it's done. I'm going to use a Solares. Zappa Gap, I used to use that. It's a quick fix, and your pincher will, it'll glue to it, but it won't stay. Another thing that won't stay is that, that tear mender is the best, but it's pretty sloppy. You got to, since you're messing with a skinny thing, you got to be very delicate. I like this stuff because you can just zap it quick with that UV light all right so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna put that together like so and we gotta find the gun we're just gonna hit that boom I don't know if you can see that That's it. We're going to do one more. Come in here. All right. Might be a little long. Okay. Hit that with that stuff again. Solar res. There we go. Okay. Bam. Hit it with that light. And it's done. Then you got your little pinchers. Which is pretty cool. Really makes it look like some pinchers. Well, thanks for tuning in. Like I said, at the bottom of this description in the content, we'll have a link there for you to go purchase these. And we appreciate your business and uh, fish these in the creeks for smallies. I've caught trout on them too. They work great. We'll see you on the next video.